a manager of a counseling team in Liberia, and we were supporting those that were sadly affected by the Ebola virus. As you can imagine, it was a devastating time, and many lives were lost, and I pay tribute to them today. However, many lives were also saved. One of those lives was of a little boy, and his name was Jetson. Jetson had created this kind of strange story in his mind, and his grandfather asked me to come and visit to show him a different side to the story. You see, his experience in the Ebola Treatment Center was seeing, for the first time, people that looked like me, but in these yellow and weird spacesuits. Now, we know that those were, in fact, the doctors, and they were, save it, well, they were risking their lives to save his. However, in his mind, those people were the cause of his immense suffering, and sadly, the death of his mommy. And so the grandfather said to me, will you come and show Jetson a, a different side to the story? And so off I went, and I remember the day. It was boiling hot. I had just eaten fufu, which is like the South African pup, or porridge in Liberia, and I walked up to the, the hut, and I saw Jetson before he saw me. And so I got to see his face change and the look of terror come over him. As I walked closer, he ran to his grandfather's legs, and he would not leave. His family tried to get him to come and say hello to me, wouldn't have it. And so I felt compelled to get a piece of paper and coloring in crayons, and I sat down on the ground, and I started to color in. And I wouldn't show him what I was doing. I was coloring and coloring, finding a lot of joy in this activity, which isn't hard for me to do. Coloring, coloring, coloring. And this little guy took a long time, but slowly I started to see him peer from around his grandfather's legs. I didn't know I was watching him. And he'd look again. And then there was this moment where he just couldn't help himself. And he had to come and see what I was doing. And so he came over, and I held the pencil to him, and he took it. He gave me this little smile, and he started to color in. We were friends, a curiosity, a connection. There is immense power in curiosity. I walked away that day challenged by Jetson. He had faced his fears and prejudice head on by allowing his curiosity to drive him forward. And I thought to myself, what if I had to do the same? What if I had to allow curiosity to drive me into the unknown? What if I were to let go of a belief of a stranger, to get to know them in the here and now for the first time? How would that change me inside and out? Please close your eyes. Dad, I can see you. Both eyes, please. I'd like you to picture someone that you've recently judged. How does that make you feel? And now I'd like you to picture someone with whom you've recently connected. How does that feel? Please open your eyes. If I had to choose between judgment and connection based on how they make me feel, I would choose connection every time. It just feels better. So how can I actively convince you to foster curiosity in your life? Perhaps you have no interest in being curious, because let's face it, our judgments are safe, in the box, comfortable. In fact, many have become quite defensive with me when I bring this idea. Well, to stir the pot just a little more, I ask you, are our statements of judgment perceived in a positive or a negative light by those around us? There's a quote that says, just because I speak with an accent doesn't mean that I think with an accent. Many of you would have heard of the psychological theory, transactional analysis, TA. T 
TA says that we all have contaminated parts of self. Simply put, this means that because of experiences from our past or messages from our childhood, we start to see the here and now in a slightly altered way. So we see reality through a certain shade of lens as we look out into the world. We usually find these parts inside of us when we go, those people, or all dot dot are dot dot. All redheads are. And then what sadly happens is that, just like Jetson, we withdraw and we disconnect. I believe we do ourselves and others the greatest disservice when we do that. We miss out on the beauty of connection and the joy that that brings. But rather, we become entrenched in stuck ideas and worldviews. Are you brave enough to consider that your truth may in fact not be true? That your perception of a group or an individual may in fact be misinformed despite overwhelming evidence? It takes courage to answer these questions. Because when you do face your personal prejudice, you're left with a decision to make. To keep on keeping on, or to do something new, something brave, and something vulnerable. To risk connecting with the very thing you fear or reject. Now, I'm aiming for clear waters. I don't want to be swimming in a pool of contamination, and I get it right sometimes. This little guy, Jetson, has given us such a generous gift in showing us that yes, it's uncomfortable, there's resistance, and actually, it can be really scary, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. By nurturing curiosity from that free and neotenous place inside of us, we can change how we experience this world one person at a time. I have been so inspired by two world leaders. They, in my books, are full of mischief, but also full of joy. In fact, they wrote a book called The Book of Joy, the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu. These two inspired leaders tell us that we all have unconscious roots of prejudice, and this causes us to struggle to show empathy to groups that are different from our own. They are trying to convince everyone to rather consider changing our mindset so that we can see ourselves as part of the group of humanity, because then everyone gets to play. They go on to say that joy is fostered in showing compassion to another person and to others, and that we are all wired to connect. So, next time you see the guy with the dreadlocks, or the girl with a different religion or sexual orientation, or the person with a different color skin. Just be curious. You may be surprised. In the movie Avatar, they don't say, I love you. They say, I see you. It is the greatest and most generous gift to see another person in their rawest form with a little less judgment and a whole lot more compassion. I was working in a refugee camp, and I had just counseled a lady, and I had heard the same story day in and day out of despair and desperation. And that day, I became overwhelmed. And I went back to our tent, I sat on the chair, and I wept. And I didn't realize that this lady had followed me back, and she caught me in this unguarded moment. She came in and she said, Penny, what's wrong? And I said to her, I feel so helpless. What good are we doing here? And I remember distinctly her face changing. It softened. And she walked up, sat next to me, and put her hand on my hand, and she said, Penny, you and your team show us your face and not your back and so you treat us with dignity. Wow, that hit me. <laughs> Are you willing to allow your prejudice to be challenged? 
Are you willing to allow curiosity to drive you into the unknown? And in closing, would you like more freedom and joy in your life? Be curious, be connected. Thank you.